Today we're checking out the greatly anticipated Manor Lords. Uh, already in the five hours or so that I've played it, uh, perhaps one of my favorite medieval strategy games and colony builders uh, to date. Uh, it is a groundbreaking game that's combining colony management and economic political civilization simulation uh, from games like RimWorld and Banish with tactical real-time battles like Total War or Mountain Blade Banner Lord. Uh, all while nailing some of the taxation and political intrigue systems from stuff like uh, Crusader Kings all into one package and yet still feels somehow distinctly different and original and f full and complete. This game is great. Uh, in the time I've sat down with it. It takes a little bit of patience to get started, but there is a lot going on here. Anyway, all around a very satisfying package, uh, which has been executed beautifully. Uh, and we're gonna give it a try, uh, right now, as a medieval lord. Uh, but I have been given early access to the game, but it's gonna be releasing in a couple weeks. Uh, so this is being posted after the embargo window has begun, if you're watching this. Uh, and you're bound to see more people playing their own posts of this game as we go. Uh, but keep in mind, the gameplay is going to be from the pre-launch build, so expect a few little bugs here and there, but honestly, for a game with this much responsive city-building design going on, everything is really good, as far as I've seen it. Uh, I've created two settlements so far, built up a colony, and managed to trade and do a little bit of warfare, including raising a small militia, and hiring a band of mercenaries to expand my claims on the land around me, but... We're gonna do basically that for a few hours, maybe give you a taste of the early stages of the game and see if this might be the type of experience that you would enjoy, um, which I think many people will. Anyway, like I said, I'm gonna index this VOD uh, to cover a lot of the game, so feel free to skip around on the timeline if you want to check out certain parts of what you're interested in. But we're gonna start a new game, so there is a full customization here. Uh, you do get one avatar in the game, but or you have different avatar portraits, but you, you can pick someone, you can customize your name, you do get a good... Uh, um, like, uh, randomization of names. I don't find a randomization button here, but I will just take AA. Here we go. Uh, we can create our coat of arms and we can customize it to scale, etc. Uh, we can change the number of instances of the insignia. I'm just gonna go with whatever. This doesn't really make a big difference. I will take this. This looks generally okay. All right, as far as scenario templates go, uh, th th what I've been given access to here, there is more coming soon. AI city building still under rework, so very cool, more stuff coming. I've tried Rise to Prosperity, which is a good one for just getting hang of the game, uh, but not really any combat here, so it's a little slow. Um, I think Restoring the Peace, which is where you've basically got um, like some rivaling factions, as well as a bunch of bandits kind of coming in and out of the region, is really the way that the game feels right, right here. And then you do have a more difficult version on the edge where you have a lot of bandits coming right away. I don't really know if I'm going to- I might just kind of, like, muddle along if I do this, so I'm going to do Restoring the Peace, because I think this is a pretty good way to play the game. Uh, and there is, like, a little bit of customization going on here. Actually, quite a lot. I'm just gonna leave everything at the defaults, which basically means that we have two years free of being raided. There will be other factions coming out and off the map. Um, and just a couple things, you know, signs of early access, but don't mind that here and there. Okay, so there is a lot to be done right here. Um... I'm going to pause so that we can just take a look at our civilization and everything going on, but we have uh, a total of five families to start and a message. Uh, build up your town, your manor, and when ready, press claims toward regions owned by your opponents. Once the claim has been pressed, be ready for battle. So uh, really the goal here is to grow our town and claim more regions. We are on this larger map right here. It's really nice the way that it kind of zooms in and out of this map with like no load time at all, which is kind of crazy, uh, and is just very seamless. Anyway, um, I do like that. These regions are claimed by another faction right here, is this, uh, Hildebolt, Hildebolt von Ber Berenut, uh, whose name I just butchered horribly. Uh, and then there are some outlaw factions here, we can send them a letter to, uh, Dear Outlaws. <laughs> I like the format of this. It is a pleasure to meet you, let's start off there, um, because it's only gonna get worse from here. So, uh, do we actually have a bandit camp on the map yet that I can see, which should be signified by a little tent? I don't see one right now, but there should be one coming up in a couple of minutes. Uh, there will be some bandits around. Anyway, oh, yeah, there they are, my bad. Okay, so yeah, there are some bandits right here. I will just unpause time for a second. And there they are, wandering around, doing bad things in general. Uh, we can confront them, but more likely other 
factions will confront them before we they before we do because that won't really be in our circle of concern for a while so we are living over here peacefully more or less uh, and we have access to all these resources and this is the land that we've claimed so I'm just going to go ahead and zoom in. So what we really want to look at here, I'm just going to skip most of these tutorial messages. I'll leave it on in case if there's anything that I haven't encountered yet. Uh, but I first off just want to see fertility. This is probably going to be the most important thing here. So just some of our general crops, emmer, flax, and barley. This just gives us a general idea, along with the layout of the woods in this region. Sometimes we have streams and other features like that too. Uh, also underground water is good to check so that we can pump from a well. Um, anything else? Smell, work in progress, fire, work in progress. So there is still a good amount uh, in early access here. But we really just want to get everything very centrally located. Okay, so after just a little bit of looking around, I've decided I want to put our logging camp right here, just so that we have access to this main road for trade, uh, which is going to be useful if we want to access any of the merchants out there. But then we'll also put out our... Uh, firewood shack right here. It's a little bit like city's skylines in some of the road layout and it works really well um, I'm just gonna put in some of these roads here and you'll like it's extremely satisfying the way that these roads get laid out Ah, just look at that. Isn't that nice? We will just build that uh, as so and they'll get to work on this Right away. I think I'm just gonna speed up time a little bit So they do have some yeah some supplies to start and they bring over their ox oxen um, and all the families come over here, and everyone is homeless right now, but we're about to give them some homes. Uh, we need to give them their termed as burgages. I believe I'm pronouncing that right, but correct me if I'm wrong, like burgers. Um, <laughs> uh, like, like uh, the, the other spelling of burgers. Oh, it, it, it's an old-timey saying. Never mind. Um, we're gonna go ahead and gather some berries out here in the woods as well. Hopefully we won't have to do too much tree clearing for that. And we'll also need a saw pit. If you put these things too far apart from the dwellings, then there's a lot of moving around. So in my experience, it's best to just put everything right next to each other and then try to make some sensible decisions on your road. Uh, we'll also put out a forester's, what is this? Yeah, a forester's hut. Uh, right around there, uh, about the same place where we're logging. We don't want to try to uproot too many trees for the constructions here. And then I'll just build in little roads in there, uh, just to kind of access some of those things. And it's kind of nice. Everything develops here very organically. It just feels like a real old medieval town, the way that your town develops. It doesn't feel like a big grid. And to put this into perspective, I'm pretty terrible at planning in these games, so I was able to feel relatively satisfied with what was going on. I'm not going to hunt for now because berries should be enough uh, for the first year. We also won't need any mining right away. Logistics would be useful, but I think I'm just going to let them get these things done. I want them to have the uh, camps up because the next thing that we want to give them because their approval rating is going to start going down because they're all homeless. I'll start to explain what more stuff is up here in a minute. Uh, but we want to get them in homes pretty fast. Homes and berry collecting, as well as firewood, because the main things that they really need are food. Preferably food variety, but uh, whatever, enough. I have heard of you uh, of your renown. I only seek to defend my rights and honor against those who would wrong me. I hope you will not judge me by the rumors and slanders that some may spread about me. Uh, this is Hildebolt, our, basically our rival. I will write back. You smell of elderberries. Uh, you have no rightful claim. Uh, this is basically our, like, lord fight. Uh, kind of the macro-economic conflict going on here. Macro-political, whatever you want to call it. Uh, right now, of more pr uh, pressing concern is the fact that we have five homeless families. It's gonna be a while before we are ready for war. Uh, we can just kind of wait on that, because we really are not. Let's go ahead and just kind of build up here a little bit and I think we will kind of take down the woods and start to build our houses in there because this area around here looks quite fertile uh, for land. You can also see the topography so you can see if you're building on a hill which might be useful for like some sort of defensive structure or something. Um, really cool stuff right here. So let's maybe build up a like a bit of a road over here. I don't want to get too close to that clay deposit but I also don't want to make it too far from the wood camp just because I mean, we basically need wood for everything, so maybe let's just do... You know, I want my people to be able to trade quite easily and come and go, and I might develop on both sides of this road because this is a nice clearing in here. So let's build our first houses right around here. 
Uh, we're going to put in Burgage plots. Okay, so this is quite a cool way of doing this. You just basically designate the um, area and you can kind of change the facing here. I think I want them all facing this way. It's kind of like real property uh, in modern times. I guess this must be where this came from because the whole idea is that uh, the king or the lord would grant land. This is based on my very crude understanding of it, so don't quote me here. But the king or the lord would grant land, uh, and then that would be given to, uh, basically the peasant class. And then they would, um, take care of the land, and then knights would be given, like, their tax money to defend them from raids. So right now I just don't have enough uh, timber. We need to collect some timber first off, so we're gonna assign a family to this job. Uh, Cause right now we have only zero, <laughs> which isn't enough. Uh, so we just need to get them on that first. All right, so I'm going to place my first two plots right around here. One of them has space for more development, the other one doesn't, but that's fine because we're going to be getting a lot of these things as we go. You can kind of fit them into these awkward trapezoidal shapes, which I like because it prevents everything from just being this awkward grid and looking like a, I, I don't know, a modern American suburb when you're in medieval times. It does look authentically like a medieval village. Sometimes you just get a little skip there because of the game's saving, um, but otherwise this has run perfectly on my computer. Um, new mercenary companies available. We aren't gonna be hiring mercenaries for a little while, so not gonna worry about that. Other than that, we've just got exposed goods, exposed goods pantry, so this is kind of a rim worldy type of notification, which I find very, very helpful and, uh, insightful for what's going on. It, it's informative in those ways while still feeling entirely like its own system. Um, I just think back to RimWorld when, with those types of notifications, which is quite useful. Um, Burgage plot right here, two more of those going up. We just want to get our all five of our families situated. So we've got another three timber, that's enough for one more. I'm just gonna get two more of these things and we can start to get them backyards with vegetables and hides, um, goat pens and things like that going soon too. All right, I've just created another two burgage plots right here. Uh, we've got our well over here. The main things that we need are like well, uh, and then each house does sort of have some other requirements. Water access, and it also they, they want a church too. Uh, a church is a little bit OP for leveling up your plots. Uh, as well as you can create a market for them too, but I, I don't want to give them too many tasks at once, otherwise they can get kind of confused and not get anything done. So I'm going to try to keep just one family working on... Uh, um, like the building right here. We've got exposed stocks, so we want to build a, a stockpile zone too. I was trying to get everybody just situated indoors. Let's get maybe a storehouse up and running right here. This looks like a fairly central place that we'll keep coming back to. Maybe we'll just build one little road inward right here just so that we can go on either side of this. So we'll go maybe out to here. And that's good. And then we do maybe a storehouse right here so they don't have to go too far up the road. I'm just trying to think of economy of movement for later on. Um, oh, we actually have minus one wood. Okay, let's just give them a little bit of time to work on that. In these first few steps in the game, we can't do too much because we just don't have any families. And also you can see that our approval rating is going down. Um, homelessness, that will turn back, so... You need higher approval for more families to move in. Currently, we've got a uh, 12 population, nine men and three women um, of our level one families, but those will level up. Hey. We've got a couple family hey. members joining. Oh, there they are. Um, have we got that storehouse? Okay, I just want to make sure that they're doing their jobs. Uh, more living spaces coming up, and we need an approval rating of at least, I think, 50% for more people to consider joining. And the higher it is, the higher our population will be. We've got. Uh, mostly unassigned families right here. I want them to keep focusing on construction. Just kind of the essential stuff right now. This also governs public order. I haven't uh, encountered the banditry yet, but that does seem to be something that can happen. Uh, also regional wealth, which is useful for importing traders and things like that. Livestock, we'll get to in a while. Um, and then just an idea of how much you have left in terms of supplies. Other than that, your other resources are here. Your construction goods, which you can highlight to go over. Your food of all different varieties, which makes people less prone to disease if they have a good variety. Fuel, uh, firewood and charcoal if you have better technology. Crops, Crafting materials that are a little more advanced, good for trading later on. Commodities, same kind of deal. And military supplies, which we'll need for later on. But it'll be a while till we get to that. 
Otherwise, that's the UI. The UI is pretty simple and pretty clear. I didn't have any issues with this on my first playthrough. I, everything was just very intuitive and easy to understand. Let's go ahead and do, um, do they have a granary yet? Let's do one of these, and I'm just going to let them work on that. We've also got time here, April. Uh, we have kind of a whole harvest season going on here, so we want to get started probably by our second year. So by the end of the first year, we'll want to have, uh, planting going on. Oh man, just so much to explain, but a lot of good stuff. And then all of this is sort of related to our lord and political. Perhaps my favorite part is you can actually go in as your lord. Uh, I always seem to play as this, uh, like, red robed man. Uh, but you can actually walk around in your colony, which just... Honestly feels organic. I mean, this is just something that I plopped down here, but you can go in and like check on all the affairs going on inside. Uh, this seems to be still early in development, so it remains to be seen what will happen here, but this is quite cool, I think. We'll do it again when our colony is a little bit more built up, but let's just give them a time, a little time to get started here. Okay, our settlement level has increased. We've finally just got everybody situated into a house. I think I created some small awkward lean to in here but it is kind of honestly this is the best responsive design i'm not sure what you call this but i've uh, that i've ever seen in a medieval game and considering how many things can go wrong with this type of um like uh game development tool this is amazing that this works so well and it has consistently as long as i've done it so just like bravo um hats off to the dev for this uh, we've got a little... Uh, I skipped that message. Uh, what I really want right here, we have like different level ups and branches that we could do. We could improve our heavy plow, we could go into like armor making. I think I'm just gonna go for forest management. Excuse me, forest management right now. Uh, and we will just uh, double our berry deposit size because that's going to be our source of food for a while. That is our forager hut. Oh, I had not actually assigned anyone to that. Okay, we will be eating berries for quite some time in here. There is just a lot to be done. Okay, so our settlement is had. Everyone is in a house. The homelessness is going away. How do we start to grow our settlement and ensure survival? So we have food. We also have firewood. Those are really the two main things that we need. We have a family assigned to each of them so that they'll do that. We also got a little income of wood. Maybe we'll be getting some saw pit stuff going on soon. In order to attract other families, the thing that's really going to put us on the fast track to doing that is going to be a church. So we want to get a church up and running as soon as possible. Uh, wooden church is gotten by five timber and 20 boards, which is quite a big ask. Uh, we also need 10 stone, but this is going to fast track us to growth. People will be attracted here when we do this. So let's go ahead and just make maybe a couple more burgage plots right here. Just enough so that anyone randomly entering the region is allowed to join. Uh, maybe like two more of these. I'm just going to put them in a row. I'll have more maybe later on and this will kind of develop around our crossroads here. But let's do this. We'll put just two more in there. All right, this is looking kind of like an old-timey village already, just kind of sprouting up around the resources. Uh, maybe we'll also put in a little market just to give people some sense of happiness right here. And we could have this... Uh, it will get fulfilled based on how close or far the houses are from it. So I'm thinking we'll probably end up having everything kind of around here. We want to make space for expansion there. Man, look at how each road is already just a little bit different. They feel so lived in though, which is just amazing considering like how much, it's just cool. I, I can't even articulate it. It's just so jaw droppingly cool. What is going on here with this system? Okay, so some food, uh, food stalls are going up. Other thing that we can do at each house is give them some type of like augmentation. So you can give them a vegetable garden. This will cost you some of your regional wealth. So we have 50 right now, so we want to be careful with this. Goat sheds will get us clothing stall supplies, because that's going to give us hides. So we won't have to grow flax in fields. I particularly like doing this, so I think I'm going to do a goat shed. Uh, I also don't mind vegetables, just because that gives them a little bit of variety in uh, food, st excuse me, food stalls. So I think I'm going to go for that as well. I could probably go for eggs too, but I haven't tried that one out. This seems a little bit easier. Alright, so we have almost a way of getting all that. Um, that used up a lot of our regional wealth. We'll get more later on as we expand our economy. 
Uh, the other thing we want to do, let's just get a couple more... Uh, no, we already have the plots. Let's go ahead and start building up our church. So we're going to need... Well, we'll need more resources for that. So let's start saving those up. All right, so with all those orders uh, put out, we're now in May. So we start around the beginning of the year. I just kind of wanted to zoom in. I mean, I've never seen a game that looks so authentically like a growing medieval village as this. Just, it kind of puts everything into perspective. Even games of yesteryear, uh, everything is kind of laying out like a gridded city. No, this, like, this is just something that I kind of randomly pooped out onto the map. And man, it already looks gorgeous. It looks so authentic and lived in and real. I put no thought into it, and there's even an illustration of it on the map, and it just looks great. Um... Cool, man. I, I can even zoom in on all the happenings. The only thing that you can't really see is, like, little more information on people's individual daily lives. I'm not sure if that's ever going to be added. But you can get, like, their names, for example, and their task going on, which I think is enough for right here. And they do all have individual countenances and appearances and apparently attitudes. All right, so we've now saved up enough that I feel confident putting down a church. Since I might build on both sides of the road, I think this should be a, a fairly centrally located building, so I'm going to put it down right there. Uh, I just kind of want to keep my workers, my, like, my living space kind of central because people will keep coming to and from this. Uh, some of the living spaces will eventually become kind of like artisan workshops. Like, you could have a, like a Fletcher's or a Boyer's workshop as someone's house and they kind of live in their home business. It's very organic the way that everything grows up like that. Um, and it starts to feel like an authentic medieval village as we go. But I don't want them to walk too far, because I did have one colony before where I put all the wood cutting far away, and it, it was just a lot of trips. The other thing you can kind of do is just start to look around and see, uh, maybe there's a spot I should have reserved for some more roads. Can I still? And I guess I could slightly shift over to the church, but this shouldn't be too bad to correct, because I can still kind of create a couple paths in here just trying to give room for people to walk to and from things you know trying to seek out paths that might be used like this looks like it might eventually become a vein something out to the main road um yeah just other options as you go and all right after a little bit of waiting around we're finally starting to frame our church here and uh once this thing goes up our approval rating is just gonna shoot up after that, it's going to be moving on to more advanced resources, but I just love the way that these things go up, so I wanted to highlight some of this. Every every little detail here has really been, like, very thoughtfully, painstakingly made out. Um, there we go. Okay, so finally, they have a church. You can even change the church bell sound. If I just give it one more second to build. Here we go, and good. All right, and we can change that. I kind of like that, just a fun little detail. Um, okay, so now the church is up, and gradually the approval will rise. We can also level up the church, but this obviously requires some other resources here. We have... Oh no, they've been stealing... They've been stealing my hides, really? Of all the things to steal. Okay. Uh, unacceptable, eventually we will address that. Just not right now. How have they been stealing the goat hides? Uh. That's the one thing I can't see is when the, the bandits come in, and that bothers me, man. I will handle that at a later date. I just don't really have the uh, the money, so I can't do that right now. All right, we will allow them to just continue stealing from us. I will raise up an army later, or perhaps hire someone to help me with this problematic uh, thing. Let's go ahead and construct some other resource acquisition places, shall we? Okay, so let's go in first for mining. I think stone is going to be one of the next necessary resources here. That looks good. I mean, I'm not really going to not put a stone harvesting thing here, so let's. we might as well do that. And then clay pit uh, goes here. Kind of reminds me of a lot of the stuff from Agricola. I don't know if you've ever played the board game. One that I bring up quite often, uh, just very satisfying from like a, I don't know, kind of like a societal evolution standpoint. These are the things that speak to us in games, you know, harvesting wood, 
for survival. They, these speak to me as a gamer and as a human. All right, so let's get those two things up and running. We've got our stone and our clay. Uh, it might also be good to get some type of hunting going on here, but we want to make just a little bit more room. Do we have any people living in here? We don't have anyone living in this one plot. What about this one? Okay, so we've got two plots for families to move into. This one is residing. It does show you the family members in there as well. Ooh, we could expand the uh, living space too. I have not actually had this. That is quite cool. Uh, but you could also upgrade it to level two. We won't be doing that for a little while. Also because we just need more stuff in our market. And we just had our hides stolen. Now it appears as if we are getting back some of the hides. Good, good for us. Uh, but for right now, let's go in and do... Not logistics. Uh, I believe it's under... Yeah, food. Okay, so we will get a hunting. So we don't want to put it into the animal habitat. I guess we just put it right here because the clay one needs to be on the deposit. This is a little tricky for me to figure out. All right, so I will put that there. Maybe get some type of hunting going on. But again, I don't really want to overwhelm them. So I'm just going to kind of wait for my approval to start rising. We're already getting plus two for our church level. Uh, but the next thing that we want to do is just upgrade our church, which is really going to take us to the next level. Ooh, yeah, upgraded church. Nothing says town like that. But for that, we're going to need a clay furnace, too. So let's go ahead and put one of those down near our uh, growing clay deposit. All right, so we've finished work on our clay furnace. A little bit of time has passed, and our approval rating is already up to 56. Uh, 56%. So we are... Uh, we are... Oh, 57 and rising. People are just so happy about this. Amazing. Uh, we are going to take all of that clay and put it in here. And man, look at how quickly they just scoop up the clay out of there. Now this is a finite resource, it seems. So we're going to need to expand other parts of the map when we run out. We've also got a couple more bandit camps, uh, brigands over here, kind of gathering. Now these won't be too difficult to take out right now with our current population. I wouldn't take them on. We also have no wealth, no money, and no influence. So that's not really doing us any particular favors. Uh, but we will eventually grow in our economic influence. Hopefully they won't attack us and just take us right now. It hasn't happened to me yet. Uh, but there's always room for a first. Deforestation has killed the berry bushes. I have not actually had this happen yet. That is very bad. Okay, stop deforesting. This hasn't happened to me yet. I don't know why. What are we doing? Uh, we will- we will reforest. Stop. All right, it's time to ignore that problem for now and upgrade to a small stone church. This is great because everyone will be so happy that we have a better church, despite the fact that they live in just a uh, disgusting box. Uh, we are just going to leave them all there for now and, uh, you know, return to our house of worship for now. Other than that, I think I'm just going to leave this berry bush area alone because uh, we have done quite enough de deforesting for today. Eventually, we won't depend upon that as much for our food. We will have like more of a, a macro economy to look after. But for now, we want to respect nature a bit more before this really turns into a large urban operation. Okay, in the meantime, we have continued to uh, replant our horribly uprooted Forest, so hopefully we will just kind of work away from this. We can also designate an area for them to cut in So I guess we could kind of like stop that with our logging camp We could go into advanced right here and instead of saying unlimited work area We could just say like work somewhere else Maybe we will work on the opposite side for now so we could settle this and maybe farm this land later on uh, Because that looks like also a pretty viable option for now. Yeah, let's just relocate it is free, after all. Okay, but in the meantime, while we work on that, winter is pressing in on all sides, so let's keep uh, working as quickly as we can, because we do need to have the means to create our own military within a pretty short time here. Uh, we need to get enough resources that we can defend ourselves, because danger is encroaching on all sides uh, as we speak. So let's go ahead and just make a few more plots right here. We're just saving for a second. Uh, there we go. Let's maybe make 
We have 20 timbers, so that's a lot. We can expand to maybe like four more plots here. That looks a little too large. Could we get it done in maybe this much room and then maybe we could squeeze them in awkwardly in another section? That looks perfect to me. Yes, I'll have one of those. Okay, great, so that is a couple more plots down what well, looks to be the beginnings of a street right here. After that, uh, we can start to take in more families, because right now we're at seven, but we're getting living space for another five, which allows us to assign the more jobs. And oh look, joy, many new trees have been planted in the space where we were destroying them before. Okay, so the next thing that we might want to think about is just getting enough goods that we can upgrade a couple of these spots to level two. So we need more requirements, really, right here. That's kind of the goal to keep leveling up our civilization. So do we have... well, what of our needs do we have met? Let's click a, a house right by um, the marketplace. So we currently have lost our fuel again. Oh, but this one has fuel. So are we at the, um, the Woodcutter's Lodge? Okay, so they have reopened their market stall. We kind of took that business out of operation for a little while. Oh well. Ignore the disease for right now, we're just not gonna worry about it. Uh, we want food variety, but... Maybe later. Uh, food stall supply, we do need a greater variety of food. Right now it's just that one family's vegetable patch, and then a bunch of berries, so... Getting a little bit more food variety would be good here. We currently don't really have it, nor do we have any way of trading. We do have the church, though. Uh, maybe we'll have another backyard. Do we have any other wealth? No, we've run out of that. Okay, so what we might want to start thinking about for next year, especially since we're in the winter right now, we have a little bit of time to prep, is to start to plant some of these fields. So let's start to look where it might be fertile on the ground, uh, in the soil. Okay, so looking from above, basically everywhere around here is good for growing wheat. So I think I'm just going to start with one... Uh, one Morgan of wheat, or maybe even a half Morgan. This is like the unit of measurement. Uh... There. That's a half Morgan. You really don't want too much, otherwise they just aren't gonna get through it. So this is going to be... let's just double check and make sure. Yeah, wheat. 62% fertility. So that's pretty good. Uh, and then we can assign crop rotation just so that we don't, you know, ruin the soil for here. I haven't really perfectly figured this out, but... I, I think this should be about what we can manage in one year, and this is going to give them just a little bit more variety. Now, if we manage to process this good into, like, you know, flour and then bread, that's going to be one very good advanced product. And since we have such fertile soil here, this is not a bad idea. But it might also be good to just have another type of crop, like, right now our entire clothing, clothing, excuse me, clothing supply Depends on that one guy's backyard and the goats that he's raising therein. We could also depend on sheep or whatever, but we're going to need to pay for the sheep and that's going to be annoying and problematic too. So let's go ahead and just maybe do some flax and some barley as well. So flax is looking pretty good here. Barley looks better over there. So this is a perfect spot to do our barley. Maybe we have some space for a road between these two fields. Uh, yeah, let's do barley right here. Maybe we'll do like another half Morgan there. That looks perfect. Really, you want to err on, uh, err on the side of not too much, because otherwise they just don't get through it. Um, and we could do barley. We'll do that in our third year, because we aren't going to have time for that right now. So we'll just leave it fallow here. Uh, barley we'll need later on, so don't worry about it right now. And then the other one that we'll do a little bit sooner will be... Uh, let's do flax, and flax will fit right about here, but I think I want to make some space for a farmhouse in here as well. Uh, so we'll put that right about there. Let me just double check my barley, whoops, I mean not barley, flax. Uh, yeah, we'll put it there, just so it's kind of centrally located, and then we'll put our... F just, this is so cool, like all the medieval economy management, man, this just very much appeals to me. It just feels like such a robust system. Uh, why am I not allowed to do this? I'm doing something wrong here. Whoops, I had the hitching post in the middle there. I'm just going to get rid of that. Also, just a moment to shout out the music in this game. Man, it sounds authentically medieval. Um, with all the chants and, you know, the... Uh, I forget what uh, all the names of 
the types of music. Uh, yeah, the medieval music, I will just say. But yes, it sounds very much like hymnal and whatnot. Let's go ahead and put in some flax there because we can weave that into linen. Wheat will also grow in year one because this isn't too much space to farm. But then we'll save barley for maybe the th second, the third. I'm not quite sure what to do here. We don't need it right now, though. Okay, so looking at our other requirements and, uh, you know, base areas that we would use to get better resources here. We have basically all the farms that we're going to need for the beginning. Pastures for sheep we'll worry about later on. I haven't really experimented with that yet, but there are other ways of getting, like, um, you know, cloth and whatever else we need. I think we can leave the windmill quite close here. I'm not actually sure if this depends upon the... Uh, f I guess it's stored in the farmhouse. I'm not quite certain about this, but I'm just gonna put the windmill right there. Oh, actually, actually, 77%. I believe this needs to be on a hill. No, we won't build it there then. Yeah, we want a lot of wind for the windmill, obviously. So let's go ahead and put that... Uh, 99% efficiency looks pretty great to me. Okay, we will do that. Maybe put in room for another kind of a road here from field to field. This is good circulation that we've allowed. Nice, nice. Maybe even a little bit more there. Um, whoops, sometimes it doesn't perfectly snap to. It's just these roads snap very nicely. Um, I, th I believe there's a setting for that too. All right, now we can do, yeah, like see all this adjust curvature. Yeah, I haven't even used any of that adjustment of curvature, but very cool stuff. Uh, let's see. So we also have communal ovens. So taking the grain to flour, then the flour to bread. So we will do that maybe over here. Cool. All right, that is another plan. Now, where are we going to do some stuff with the barley and flax? I think we can put a weaver workshop pretty close by over here. Where was the flax coming in? Like there-ish? All right, we don't have enough goods. Let's take some time to catch up. Okay, it is time to form a spear militia because we happen to have a few extra spears just lying around and there are bad people nearby. So if we just rally this unit, maybe like here nearby our houses, the men in our village will go to their homes, take their spears and shields. I'm just going to skip over all of the tutorial text. Uh, and we will just kind of wing it right here. And they will go to probably some of their deaths down here to this bandit camp. Oh, wait a minute. We do actually have a second bandit camp over there. Um, I want to just look into this for a second. Are they able to... Maybe we'll attack the nearer one to see if the others don't come at us or... If they do start to move, just leave it. Because generally speaking, we are better armed than these bandits. But if they reinforce each other, we will be in a problematic fisticuffs. Okay, so what we have are two bandit camps. We have one over here and one over here. But I think that if we, like, just kind of get these ones to follow us into the woods, we can draw them out one by one. Because if we manage to ransack one of their camps, then we get a lot more money and a lot more influence from them. And that's obviously pretty good uh, for our overall campaign and our economic influence on the map. So let's just see if we can just draw them out here over beyond the road. Yeah, they are coming into the woods. Are the other ones coming? No, okay, they're just kind of chilling at their camp. That should give us enough time. And if we do have to retreat, we should be able to probably get in ho uh, get home on time for dinner. Let's just bring them even back a little bit more. We can even kind of like spread out our men in line or in formation like this. This will become more useful once we start to get bows and stuff like that. But this is a fairly primitive club versus spear combat for right now. So let's just do this one out. Okay, I've ordered a balanced formation and hopefully we should just eat into them for right now. Okay, are you guys staying? All right, good. Fine, we will fight. The raiders are near. And we go marching into combat like that, and it, it does actually look quite cool and badass. Uh, we slightly outnumber them, and I do believe our gear is better. Effectiveness 71%, effectiveness 48%. I'm still trying to figure out exactly what this means. I do believe this means that we are the ones with the advantage. 
Yeah, I mean, based on what I have observed in former combats and the victors, if you highlight over the enemy and it says the percent effectiveness... Oh, have they... Wait a second. Okay, these guys haven't left their ca uh, camp, so I think we're good to just finish off this combat right here. Both of them are in red, which I guess, does that mean we are at... I guess that means we are at lowering effectiveness, but no one is doing too particularly well in this fight. Is It is in the snow... I mean, they are going uphill. I'm not sure. Does that make a difference? So, I'm trying to figure out what environmental factors uh, change this, but overall, it does appear that we are winning. I'm just gonna go to slow it down because this combat looks great, man. This looks like authentic medieval combat. I don't really know exactly what is going on here besides just a lot of pushing and shoving, but man, it looks like the kind of awkward and brutal stabbing that you would expect from medieval combat, right? Alright, so we've routed them. We lost only one man, fortunately. I'm just gonna go over to this bandit camp to sack it. I'll probably leave this one over here for right now. I thought it was just one camp, but when I set out, I didn't notice that, so... Hopefully they didn't come to the village, and that'll... Hopefully prevent them from stealing stuff from us anymore, uh, or as much. Now we're gonna try to disband this unit, because we don't want to have them... Well, all together all the time, but when we come here, we get a new message, and we will, um... So we can either send resources to our treasury or send them to the town. Uh, we can use these four hiring mercenaries, so I think I'm actually going to put this into the treasury so that I can just go straight to the next combat. But I will bring these guys back home for now, so come home, people. Uh, I want to be the one to get these bandit camps, though, so that I can get the influence, so that I can press claims on more regions. Where is there another enemy unit? Oh, darn, they're over there. Well, we'll be back on, uh, back home in time. Another thing that I'm gonna do is, let's go over to hire some more mercenaries, so... <laughs> I do really enjoy these, like, names for them. We have the Battle Brothers. There was another called, like, the, the Hostile Flock of Geese, and it was, like, men who generally are fit for violence. Uh, a small pack of local misfits and troublemakers. These look kind of weak, actually, local thugs. Story tells they, uh, Battle Brothers, they lost a bet with their former liege in a brothel, leading them to abandoning their former lives and joining him as fighters. They decided to stick to his life. Okay. Uh, well-disciplined fighters for an unknown reason. They discarded the sword to use only maces and axes as weapons of choice. All right, the ravenous vultures. Uh... Uh, let's see, how much do I have money for? So I do have enough money for the best possible thing here. We might want that to take out... Do we have multiple bandit camps? I'm just gonna kind of zoom out here for a second. We have one there in the middle, and we also have one over here. You know, I could take out multiple bandit camps if I hire the good mercenaries, so... As our men retreat, let's go ahead and just hire, with the money that we just got from that, the best... the ravenous vultures. Um, sign the contract, there we go, and I, next payment in 30 days, okay, so we have them for, I guess, then 30 days worth of time, I'm still kind of figuring this all out. Unfortunately, they've come up from the wrong side of the map, uh, so we will need to go here and then here. Hopefully they can traverse all that land in time, and it also appears as if, um, uh, these mercenaries from the other faction are here, so we'll see if they get there first, but... Anyway, let's just pass some time and see what happens. In the meantime, back home, while we wait for our men. And we will descend here to disband them. Uh, it is coming to spring, and we are getting to ready to sow the next seed of crops. So just, like, consider that combat... It was extremely seamless with the colony building. I'm really liking this in this game, because most games always lean toward the economics, and the combat feels kind of tacked on. No, it just feels very fluid here, man. It just feels great. Okay, so I have some unfortunate news. The, uh, bandits seem to have... Okay, so I have some unfortunate news. It seems that the bandits have just continued to march toward our town, so we need to reform our militia. Because that's not going to help at all, and what's even worse is that it looks like that uh, the brigands for hire from our rival faction are going to claim their base, making this even worse. I don't really want to get into armed conflict right now with this other faction. I'd rather claim some neutral areas, so I'm just going to see if they just miss it for some reason. But otherwise, uh, we are going for the other bandit camp. I think we should actually just make a beeline for that in case right now. 
Uh, but yeah, otherwise we do have to reform our men and like defend our homeland right here. Uh, I still think we'll win because we've had enough time to recover. We're back up to 18 men. These guys should be coming out of the trees in just a couple seconds here to come after our homes. Okay, so here they come, fighting us on our home territory. Honestly, the nerve right here. Look at this. All right, but we are 18, and they are only 16, and we have much better energy now, so... Uh, actually, this is going to be a pretty close fight. Uh, we may even lose this by a little bit. Not totally sure here, because our guys were pretty tired. Will the mercenaries be here on time? I probably could have just left this for the other faction to get. Ah, oh, man, they are claiming it. That's a pain. But I wanted the influence. I got a little bit greedy there. Let's just see how this fight goes. Again, we're pretty bare bones right here, so there's not much we can do. Yeah, it's not looking too good. All right, let's just fast forward and see what happens. Somehow we are winning. All right, maybe I'm like misreading stuff then. <laughs> Whatever, okay, uh, I guess we got lucky that time. 17, eight, yeah, okay, we are definitely getting this one. All right, somehow we won. Uh, don't question it. There you go. Flee for your lives! Uh, I, maybe there's a way to capture them in the future, but I'm just going to leave it for now. Alright, uh... The Fiends! These other people have taken our other area, unfortunately. We have another 24 days for these mercenaries, so let's see if we can get this other bandit camp right now. Although it looks like they're closing in on that soon, too. Okay, I've just ordered these mercenaries to run because it looks like they're gonna get to the bandit camp before us, so I want to make sure that we get there first, and are we actually, uh... No, we're not actually encountering the bandits right now. I just want to get there before them to claim this influence because this is very important right here. We don't want this enemy to get it. And it looks like they're actually going to fight them. Let's just charge the other way so that we can sack the camp while they fight the bandits. We just did the same thing to them that they did to us. Uh, except over here, so we're going to make them do all the work over here. This is dirty, but I mean it is war So look at this. <laughs> oh, we actually get to see like the full conflict now their force is way bigger than ours right now so They aren't fighting with us yet, but they also have bowmen and stuff like that, too And then we're gonna have another 18 days with these mercenaries, so They get what they deserve uh, Although our guys are pretty fatigued too. We're gonna have to stop them off at home after this Let's go ahead and have them stop running. Just take the bandit camp. And we'll fast forward there, and then they get into the fight with the other guys. We ransack that. We will send the resources, uh... Yeah, we'll use this to grow our economy. We, we want to get better in trade. I don't want to be doing all military for this right now. And it looks like these brigands have been, like, instantly routed by these people. We will now send them home. Uh, it remains to be seen how fatigued the other guys are. Probably not as bad as our guys. They might get to this other one first, but even so, that was a pretty decent early claim on stuff. And we're at 890. We need a thousand to claim a region, though. But this kind of shows how quickly you can go back and forth between the military command as well as the economy. Uh, and now we're probably going to go right back in with our, um, like our economic uh, grind again, because there is still quite a lot to do. All right, meanwhile at home, uh, let's just look at some of the harvest elements. I mean, I know it's cool, like, we want to go back into combat right away, and a lot of it is maneuvering around, but if we don't manage our economy, then everything will kind of fall apart right here. So what's going on right now is, uh, we want to start to level up our- Ooh, we've actually got the food stall supplies going. This is very nice. Um, I will also get someone on this tannery, because we have had more families moving in. Now we've got ten. Uh, are we filling up all of these houses already? No, we still do have some room. That is good. Uh, we could get more vegetable gardens up. That might be useful. Yeah, because we sent back all of that money to our home. So one thing that we can do with all this regional wealth that we've been getting is... Now we've got three families free, so let's go ahead and build a trading post. Trading posts are very, very useful, and it took me a while to see this. I would say I only figured it out after around five hours of play. I thought, like, okay, well, I prefer being self-sufficient. No, you're really meant to trade in this game. Uh, but you have to pay for trading routes. Oh, we have bodies that need burial. Ooh. Um, are these good or... Villages required to be buried on hallowed ground of the church while raiders may be dumped into the corpse. Make sure you have a family assigned to handle it. Okay, we will handle that right now. Um, 
So I guess we just do that on the church ground. I've not actually had dead bodies in our area yet. I guess the corpse pit we could just kind of put somewhere. <laughs> Fertilizer? <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. We will do... I guess we'll just put the dead bodies somewhere off in the woods that belong in a pit, you know? Like, if it's a raider's corpse, they don't really need any fancy burial, but if it's our own people, we'll bring them to the, to the, uh, to the church. So there we go. We don't want that, like, rotting here and causing whatever it does. But in the meantime, uh, we're still waiting on the clothing stalls right here. We are starting to get some of the tannery stuff going. So, now we do have a clothing stall that's open, so that's great. Uh, we should start supplying that and then building... We'll see this on these nearby houses first, but yeah, see how these are being supplied first? Whereas if we go to one farther away, it's not being supplied as quickly. So we should start getting supplies from this clothing stall. Okay, here are our men going through. These are our hired mercenaries, don't forget. So I've ordered them to run to this bandit camp. I'm just trying to, like, exhaust our mercenaries before we run out of time with them. Um, although we will have to disband them. Actually, you know, they're probably not going to be too happy about this. You know, we're just going to disband them. Sorry. <laughs> just instantly teleport away. Uh, okay. I don't want to risk getting involved with, like, mercenaries who are out for blood. Um, they are significantly stronger than us. These guys won't fight us here. Although I think they're just passing through our lands right now. Yeah, they're fairly peaceful. They haven't really declared any open war on us yet. Although it's kind of rude that they're just walking through our fields, man. Dude, we were plowing that. What the hell? Speaking of which, uh, the fields have their plowing progress, then they have their sowing progress. Right now we're in March, so this is a good time to be finishing up with the plowing. We're pretty much right on target right here. Sowing, and then crop growth, uh, and then the harvest, which occurs around September. But you can tell that based on how, like, dark the field is. This is the one that we're leaving fallow, because we just kind of want to alternate for now. Man, they really are not too particularly well-armed. See, these are all mercenaries of the other faction, too. One thing that's kind of tricky is I believe that the other faction is off-map. It would be kind of neat to watch them building, too, but... Um, this is all I've seen for now. Still works out pretty well. Um, other stuff. Okay, let's get the trading post ready. We just have to let them develop a little bit. Oh, and here we go. Uh, so we are now going to start upgrading our burgage plots to level two. And once we get enough of these up, we will start to, uh, be able to build a manor, which will... I mean, that's why the game is called Manor Lords. Uh, and then we will be able to have our retinue. So what do we need for this? We need two... Uh, level 2 or higher burgage plots in order to get the next level up. So that's going to give us another bonus. We solve those dead bodies that need burial. Um, but that's going to give us the manor that we have been seeking. Alright, where were we? We are about to level up our town, uh, Eichenhau, uh, to level medium village. So we need two burgage plots for that. Uh, and that will give us uh, the required influence in order to make a claim on another area. So what we might want to start to do is to think about which area would give us the most advantageous strategic position as well as uh, access to resources, which is all important, of course. Uh, I'm kind of... Ooh. Actually, this one looks very nice as well. I was thinking of taking either this one or this one, just because it would keep us on a map edge, which would keep our borders more manageable. You know, it's not really so much space, it's like these finite resources. It's more access to trade it's going to become, because as we gain wealth here, um, where is it? Our regional wealth. Yeah, here it is. So we're going to start to um, get into deals with our trader, and we want to start to get put together, like, trade deals, routes that uh, happen, or routes, routes that we hire out. Oh, wait a moment, what have we got? Another rule is army. I've never seen this, though, where, like, a kind of rivaling faction will just walk through your place. I guess because we aren't at open war yet. We're just sort of, like, butting heads right now. Kind of cool, though, just watch them, like, go away grumbling from our base. Although, keep in mind, those aren't their actual men. Those are just mercenaries, so... I guess I doubt that they're strong enough to challenge us yet into open war. But who knows? Um, I've really played this game through on a playthrough up to, like, maybe three hours so far. I don't know how the AI scales after that, but... Oh, uh, TBD, I guess. 
All right, our settlement level has increased, so Eichenhau has a new development point. And we have a couple of options here. So we could improve our trapping, which uh, does improve our meat acquisition, which is nice. Passive meat acquisition. Who doesn't like that? Charcoal kiln, which will eat up another family's time, but basically doubles the value of firewood, so we don't have to chop down as much woods or whatever we're going to do. Uh, is going to be more useful when we get a bigger population. Some of these things are also locked in early access, so keep that in mind. Trade logistics. Establishing a new route always costs some... Uh... That actually might not be bad, just because some trade routes get extremely expensive. I think I'm going to do this one. I didn't really see its utility before, but... Uh, some trade routes get very, very pricey. Like, for example, if we want to get swords or, uh, spears on a trade route, which... It is kind of annoying to have to manufacture them. Here we go, so now these max out at 25. Some of these were up to, like, 150 for a trade route before. So, see, all of these are at 25. Yeah, these were all, like, 200 for a trade route before. So this is great. Uh, now we can look at what we actually have in our... By the way, we need to pay for a horse and cart to come here normally. But you pay once, and then you get the trade route forever, which is nice. So we don't really have too much of a surplus of anything right now. Uh, arguably hides, so I think we will probably just import for now. Let's go over to trading, and yeah, we will start to arm up our military. Now, we can get war bows by, like, manufacturing them here, but I think, uh, let's see, we've got our... Man, let's just see what our gear is in our military. So, it would be nice if we could have a standing army so that we didn't have to pay people all the time for that. So, we don't really have any armor. It'd be kind of cool if we could just arm up our guys well, rather than trying to- hey, Actually, you know, we are going to have a mass of uh, rabble and peasants, so let's just go ahead and arm them lightly first. Let's make sure that everyone has a weapon to begin with. So we will do buy a trade route, establish a trade route, and you can kind of see this on the map. These guys will be wandering around in horse and cart. And then we could go over to trade, so uh, we could kind of do it as a give and take. Since we aren't actually creating any, I'm just going to set this to import, and then you set the amount that you want to import. I think that this system works great, because it just kind of works like that Dwarf Fortress work order management. Um, or in RimWorld, or in Insert Your Favorite Colony Game here. Uh, those are just the ones I experienced in. But, uh, yeah, this is nice because we don't actually have to do all the micromanaging every time that they come in and trade, and this is just sort of like, let the marketplace do this. Uh, as far as what we actually need, so that's 20 times 17, so that's going to eat up just about all of our remaining gold, but I figured if we could get another 20 or so guys, uh, employed with spears in our battalion, let's also just say, just because I want to get these other trade routes going, and I think we're going to have some extra planks, I mean, seeing as timber is a renewable resource, right, I mean, we could just always plant more, let's go over to... We will be a net exporter, uh, actually only an exporter of planks, and we will just say, let's make sure that our surplus is at only... I will establish a trade route. Now, this doesn't sell for as much, but two is fine for something that's renewable. Uh, we will say that we always want at least 20. Actually, let's just up that number a little bit. Maybe we won't get trading for a little while, but eventually we will. Uh, and then the other thing that we probably want to get is just more armor uh, and bows because that's going to raise the surface area of attack. Hopefully uh, not lose any lives in these conflicts. But for now, we're still just kind of like in trade route, um, train route, trade route establishment mode. Also, I'm trying to look at what we might be good at creating. I'm thinking that eventually we might be very good at producing bread. So if we could set up that into our trade route as well. Food, if we have bread, bread is worth four, which as far as food goes is great. Yeah, I think I'm just going to pay for that trade route right now. We won't use it for a while, but I will be a net exporter of bread. And the surplus that we always want on hand is going to be, let's set that to like, I'm going to set that higher. Let's say 50. We're going to have to set that even higher as our population grows. But this is just an idea of how we're going to create wealth. Because we do have this regional wealth, which is how we get sheep, we import things. And there's a lot of stuff that we just don't have access to right now. So we're going to have to trade for it. Um, so yeah, anyway, that's how trade works. Trade is important. Uh, that one kind of slipped me by when I first saw it. But uh, yeah, it is good to have. Another little detail just popped out to me here. Uh, we actually do have graves in our cemetery for our fallen soldiers, so... 
Uh, just kind of neat to see how these little prefabs are kind of... Actually, I, I'm not even sure if they are what part of them can be considered prefab, so correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, I mean, yeah, part of it is, like, prefabricated, but, uh, yeah, I mean, they are kind of, like, responsive structures, but, uh, just cool to see this kind of happening, uh, in our own very base right here. Okay, and now that we have a small village, uh, it has come for the all-important manor to, uh, come into existence, so I'm going to put this... Uh, I honestly do not know where to put this tactically. I'm just going to put it in an important looking spot, like on the top of a hill or something. Or actually, maybe we'll just leave it out here, kind of near our trade route. Eventually we can add walls and stuff to this for, like, defense. Um, maybe it makes more sense to, like, bring it in in some way. Actually, you know, maybe putting it at the top of a hill would be kind of cool. Though I don't want it too far from everything else. Let's just put it maybe across from the church. That seems like an important spot, right? Like, between god and king, um, or god and lord in this case. I will also build on a... Oh, I don't have the resources for it right now. You can start to, like, augment your manor with other things. We're just going to have a boring, simple manor right now to start. I'm sorry, that's the way I am. But, uh, yeah, this should hopefully start to get us in. I'll just do it at secondary road there, because there's going to be a lot of people coming and going from the important people doing bim... bimness things, uh, as we go here. Oh, it looks like that we actually did import some of those spears. Uh, did we get that? Okay, so we did get one successful trade going. I assigned one family to that also. So now we can start to expand out our military. Uh, we have 18 out of 36. Are we able to... Oh, equipment missing. So we don't actually have the, sh uh, the shields required for this. I stand corrected. So we'll need to do a little bit more. I might want to import some of that. But uh, yeah, we need to find a better way of getting some regional wealth. So we need to find some good that we can reliably export all of the time. Cool things are happening in the fields. Uh, we are beginning to finish up our sowing of... Uh, this is flax, so this will be used for clothing. Uh, and then we also have a, a field full of wheat, and this has been finished. This is what I'm talking about, like, I have one family assigned to this. I don't want to start to get everyone plowing the fields. That would just be a big commit, because I have other industries that I need. But this is about what they can manage. That's why I'm leaving this one fallow for the first year, just because right now we're in May. Really, everything should be growing now, but it's not yet, because we're still... Eh, actually, we are... It is growing, even though that we haven't... Oh, this is kind of nice. But yeah, even so, um... It is May. We should be pretty much planted now, so I don't want to do too much more than that, so that's about what I care to do. And cool, the settlement keeps growing, so let's just keep it that way. Okay, we have spotted an abandoned uh, bandit camp, so I deem this an important enough reason to... Do we have anyone? I thought there was, like, an enemy coming from off-map. No, apparently not. Uh, I deem this an important enough reason, though, to go over there and just take their camp, sack it of any resources that are remaining. We'll also have a retinue, so dedicated soldiers from our, um... At least I believe they're dedicated soldiers. And, you know, I'm not entirely certain about that. But yeah, we'll be getting one from our manor soon, so we'll have our second combat unit. And alongside that... Oh, you know, maybe we could even divide this in half, nine and nine, because there's so much ground to be covered. Most of it is just claiming these camps, uh, these camps as they've been abandoned by people. Whoops, don't go that way. Uh, but yeah, I mean, this is a great way to gain regional wealth and influence as we go. Start to claim more areas. You know, like, we are keeping these lands safe and therefore they belong to us. Because to be fair, before we weren't doing a very good job at that. Alright, just a minute on the manor. Alright, we've, uh, actually just got our manor out, so now we can begin taxation. No one will be happy about taxation, but we're going to do it anyway. Land tax, uh, so collected from, uh, regional wealth. Okay, so maybe not, like, the best way to get it. There's other ways where you can, uh, get it if you're, like, in war or for grain being made into flour, which is kind of funny. Uh, presented surplus food that is given to the church in return for, to, uh, influence. So if you're making a lot of food, you can levy, like, certain taxes just based on whatever you're producing a lot of. I figured just a little bit wouldn't be bad here. Um, I believe this goes directly into our personal wealth. So we have two types of wealth going on here. We have our treasury and we also have our regional wealth. These can sometimes be exchanged for one another. Like, when we get this camp, it will be like, do you want to put it into your personal supply or do you want to give it to the people? They both have their own advantages and disadvantages. Um, there's probably more ways to change them from one to the other as you get further, I don't know. But, uh, right now... 
we don't have any way of uh, getting a lot of troops, so we might want to put it into the treasury, but also the nearest town would help us expand our economy. I'm feeling like the economy might be a little bit more valuable right now because eventually that will be important. It looks like we're getting some type of like early access thing going on there, but that's fine. Um, I will send these men. Yeah, now we have our retinue who are better armored, I believe. Uh, what is actually their gear? Does it say, okay, these guys are soaking wet. We might want to send them home just because these are our people. We really don't want to be like sending all of our people, all of our economy out just to like gather resources every here and there. But now look, we have 1,100 influence. I'm going to send out my retinue. And these guys could actually fight pretty well. I've seen them beat like a group of 15 bandits. I guess I could wait till the end of the storm, but I don't really care. They're just digital people. Uh, and I'm going to claim another region. Now, this area looks good. 3,485 clay, but this area is comparable. This also has a rich berry deposit, which is quite nice while we're uh, still growing. Overall, I think this one is slightly richer in terms of resources, but these ones look slightly closer together, which might be nicer for development, you know? Um, territory size amounts look comparable, and I think strategically, more or less the same. Let's just take this one, eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Yeah, also King's Favor, which I have not done as a way of claiming, uh, but that is an option. Just wanted to take a minute uh, looking from above here. If you've ever, like, been on a plane ride or anything and seen down on uh, farmland, this is starting to really look like that, which is maybe one of my favorite parts about this game is I can't think of any other civilization builder where I saw something quite like that so quickly and just... I mean, I wasn't thinking too hard about it when I created this area, but it just kind of goes to show this is a real robust simulation going on here. Uh, all in all, too, one thing I'll add about this game, just impressions from playing it, is it is kind of slow, and that might occur to you. Like, I was thinking to myself, where is the fun, when I couldn't figure out where the trade was. Um, whoops, I don't know why that happened. Um, but it, it is just a very big, grand, robust simulation game. And when you get a hang of it, it's kind of in that RimWorld sense where your first playthrough is going to be like, uh, all my pawns turned into pyromaniacs and I couldn't figure out what to do with them. But no, like, once you figure out how to trade and raise an army and arm them up, uh, which, you know, maybe might take three or four hours, there is a lot of game happening under here. Just an impression that I think some people might get um, if they don't really sit down with the simulation game for a while. Okay, let's disband them. Uh, but just something I thought of. Uh, another bandit camp. Okay, cool. All right, so we have claimed another region. Now we can settle this if we wish. Uh, we will need to go in with, like, tents again. We haven't really fully finished with our first region. These two are also claimed by the other ruler. Uh, do we have any other kind of diplomacy that can occur here? It needs silver. De de these look like early access things. Um, because, yeah, same kind of deal here. Deer Hill de Bron Bolt von Berenut. Squidward smells good. Um, not much else to do here. Okay, we've got a little bit of civilization development to do, so I'm just going to kind of do some of that in the backdrop now. I just want to point out how much detail has been put into this game. Uh, look at just the individual smoke rising up from certain houses. Now, this does, like, change from house to house. The other thing, too, that I'm noticing is just you have an entire economy going on in all of these different uh, plots. Like, everyone's different house. And when you get into the higher level houses, uh, let's see, this is a level two one. So now we can start to make, like, cobbler's workshop, boyer's workshop, blacksmith's workshop, and just give individual fami families, like, these artisanal specializations. Even a joiner's workshop can be pretty profitable to have around. So if you specialize in one particular thing, you can, uh, you can extract a lot of wealth and prosperity from it, or just have this entire, like, inter-residential economy going on. I just made up that word, but hopefully it made me sound smarter. Um, uh... Yeah, that, that's about all I had to say. Just stuff that I think is cool. And alright, we've come to the harvest, so now they're starting to reap uh, what was in the fields from before. 
Uh, I don't really know why I didn't get anything show up. Sometimes you do see, like, little bushels of flax. Uh, maybe they didn't grow enough this year in order for me to see them. Yeah, we had only 40%, so we, we might not have planted fast enough. Um, could just be, like, a little graphical thing here or there. I'm not honestly sure, but I do have some wheat coming up here, which has miraculously appeared. Uh, we now have 30 of that, which is good, because we're kind of lacking in food variety. We just need more families, because we need... More specialized jobs to just kind of, like, take this whole- here we go, construction finished, burgage plot, okay, cool, yeah. We need more families to kind of sustain this massive civilization building effort on now. And we've kind of carved out a residential zone here, this area is a bit more fertile over here, so... Maybe we'll take out the rest of this, uh, stone in here, there's only 33 left, we could just finish up with this camp. I really- I'm kind of reluctant to export any of that stone, just because we have such a limited amount of it. Uh, but it would be good to get it out of the way, to make way for whatever else we're going to do there, because now it really comes to just crops and developing the land itself. So, let's put some people into the windmill, uh, and then we'll put some people into the communal oven. Um, well, that is, make their job working in the- you know what I mean. Um, but yes, this will now start to give us some fantastic grain. Isn't that amazing grain? Another thing, too, is I might actually lower taxes a little bit right here, just because... I don't really need much wealth right now. Uh, I have enough that I can raise some um, mercenaries if need be. Although we don't really need mercenaries that much. I think we've got another bandit camp up somewhere. Here we go. Always good fun to sack a bandit camp. Let's go in. This time we will rally both the retinue as well as our spear people. Which is the technical name for our spear militia. Spear people, spear people. Here they go. Come in. Now you can see, uh, like multiple units. Ooh, they actually go together like this. I I'm trying to remember which game did this first. Was it like... Or the, like this way of showing... It feels like a very kind of Total War-y type of thing, but, you know, like... En masse troop commanding is cool, objectively. Let's go send them out. There's going to be a lot of moving, so that won't feel too good, but whatever. Wow, these guys really do move much faster than them. Uh, don't have to run to positions. I don't want you to get that fatigued. Are you guys running? No, you're not. Okay, I don't know why they did that. I've just, like, worn them down already. Whatever. Okay, this is nice to know. You can actually rest guys just somewhere, because these guys significantly outran our other militia. We didn't really need them to run that fast, but they do recover fatigue as they go here. Why are you... Wait a second, do not go back. Why are you doing that? Never mind, I don't know what I'm doing right here. Alright, I've not really given them time to recover because they don't need it. I'm going hard on them. Uh, let's just have these guys walk up here. The bandits are coming to us anyway. I just need to give our retinue some time to kind of recover here. And are they coming? Yeah, they're coming for me, so I might as well just wait for them. Recover. And let's just see this. See how they are recovering their fatigue? Kind of cool here. Um... Some of this stuff is still a bit confusing to me, like... Okay, well, their cohesion is up, that makes sense. Their fatigue, because they've been marching. They can also get the soaking wet kind of mood lit. We have a hundred... Wow, very cool, though. Um, I don't really get what the experience is. I'm gonna have to figure that one out, but... Yeah, anyway, troop commanding. Uh, I do believe we have more abilities to kind of pick from later on, but I'm just going for some very bare-bones troops right here, so... It is what it is. We meet the bandits in open combat. This might be my favorite part of this game, is just marching dudes in... ...from their farms, working, cutting timber, and the like... ...to poke each other with sharp, pointed objects. And then it just sort of turns into an awkward high school dance. Of, I mean, this has got to be what medieval warfare was like, man. Like, brutal. Just think about it. That's horrifying. That's worse than modern con- Dude, you get hit with a spear? That's bananas. To say the least. Look at that. Look at this. Just... And all the bright colors, too. And yet it still somehow just looks great. I've never seen combat done 
in quite such a satisfying manner. Although, I don't really play too many of the Total War games, so perhaps they have been improved and I will eat my hat and have to go back. But still, this looks great, man. I'm liking it. Alright, I just wanted to go through sped up combat right here. Let's see what this looks like. This is about the only way to do this, unless if I were really being very careful. We seem to win by a lot. I'm still just trying to figure it out. Uh, maybe I'm like playing on a really easy difficulty or something. I have to go double check my settings, but everything's the default as I've left it, so whatever, I'm good with that. I mean, maybe brigands are just kind of weak. I haven't tried to fight mercenaries yet either, to be fair, so there is that. All right, so let's just check on our guys' fatigue and stuff too, because they can get ambushed after these fights and that's no good. Fatigue, climbing, cohesion, that makes sense. Recent losses, too, also. Oh, so that is feeding into, I suppose, morale. So maybe this isn't like... I'm gonna stop trying to make conjectures at what it might be. I'm just gonna look like an idiot later on. Read the comments section. Every comment will be like, hey, hey, you idiot. The real answer is this. Hopefully that will be helpful. Or I will figure it out in 10 minutes. Alright, we now have enough, uh, upgrades and market stalls from all the vegetable gardens we've been putting in people's backyards to upgrade the last of our Burgage plots to level 2 to give us, uh, the next move toward large village. Which is the hope, so then we can start to get more and more regional bonuses that'll just make it easier to turn this from a small village into, like, a, a bustling city. So I, I think the next thing we'll probably end up doing will be... Uh, could be firewood. We've just done a lot of deforesting, and I only see it getting worse, so that might be a good thing to have. We will even move this forester's hut closer to our logging camp, because I've kind of done a number on that. You can see all the trees coming down just in a, in a great radius over here. All right, our settlement level has increased at Eichenhau. Uh, we could get into armor making, but I think we'll probably just trade for much of that. Foreign supplies, firewood cart. Uh, and permanent market stall, which provides passive income of firewood as long as the region has enough regional wealth. Region does not pay the transport fee, must be... That is quite cool. Passive income of... All these passive income items are kind of cool. Um, we are starting to run out of stone, and we're going to go through the clay in our area next. This is bad, but other things happen. Enables employing of oxen. We are, uh, oxen are kind of a secondary cost. Let's just do foreign supplies, uh, suppliers, because this seems pretty great. It, although it doesn't specify the regional wealth required. We're going to start to get a lot more regional wealth, especially as we start to trade some of these crops. I do think our area is rich in... S uh, I mean, it's all relative. <laughs> Not that rich, but <laughs> richer than my last one, that is to say, uh, in certain crop types. I think we can start to do is just kind of scout some other areas that might be useful for... Ooh! Oh, we actually have to build this. Okay, I will put it into the... Do we put it into the market? Yeah, I guess I, I, guess I do. Uh, that is quite cool. I will put it by the other market stalls. So let's just add in one of those. So what is that, a firewood cart? Uh, region does not pay the transfer fee, must be, fee must be placed on the marketplace, let's do that. And then another one of these, I hope that they can get between these, I'm just going to try to line them up with our other carts. Sweet! Abandoned. Never mind. The other thing that I've created here is a tavern. Uh, this is going to be useful just for, well, once we get barley, which we do have a field of barley, that's gonna be, uh... Well, have we plowed it already? They were plowing it before, but then winter came. I was kind of questioning that. It was like, okay, the snows are coming. I don't know, can you do that? I, I have no experience in farming. Uh, I just don't know how it works. Please explain it to me. But yeah, that should be the next project for this year. As well as more policies available. What do we even have here? Work area is empty. Too bad. Just wait for next year with the berries. Otherwise, we're now starting to lose certain industries, like the stone cutting. There's just none left, so I'm probably going to demolish this. And then, um, I don't know, settle a new region, because resources are finite and scarce, and, uh, we want them. 
Okay, we finally have bandits approaching us. Uh, I would normally hire mercenaries because this is quite a lot of bandits. Although, how many men do we now have? We have 44 men, so this should be more than enough to rally our militia. Uh, the other thing, too, about mercenaries is that they start off from some weird map edge. So it's more like if you have a lot of things for them to do in a region, it's useful to hire them or as soon as you spot a threat. But I didn't know how these guys would approach us, so... I just kind of waited for a while, but now they're here. Uh, now they're here and it's time to tango. Uh, and I'm not talking about dancing. Unless if you're talking, of course, about the dance of death. Uh, which there will be a lot of that. So we're going to go ahead over here. I wonder which bell that is. Is that the manor bell or the church bell? <laughs> That'd be kind of dark. Uh, anyway, much blood will be spilled death today. Uh, in ye old... Actually, what year does this take place in? Yeah, I'm... It's probably early moderning. Yeah, this would be... This is too late for Old English, by far. Uh, this would be more like early modern English. Yeah, okay, I guess we could say ye old now, right? Alright. Open war begins now. So I don't really see the point of marching my men out there. It's just going to tire them out. In fact, I've accidentally had them run here. I'm just going to have them recover a lot of fatigue. Because, you know, why fight them away when we could just fight them at home? This is totally fine. And they have disappeared completely. Is there some sort of fog of war going on here? I know not. Uh, although I have seen them just oddly, like, disappear here before. So. They're coming. Okay, it seems as though the enemy, like, disappeared into some sort of fog of war. Either that or I just lost track of them. They were in the woods, however, and there is like, a shadow over there, so that's all I guess I can really conclude here. But anyway, they kind of asked for it here. This is 5 versus 18, and now 36 versus 18. We're backing up our boys. Are they fatigued? They aren't really fatigued, though. We accidentally ran into combat. We just have to try that again. I guess let's see if we can surround them somehow, right? Like, doesn't that seem advantageous? Somehow, let's just maneuver over here and just get around them. Come on, boys. There's got to be some better way to flank here, because right now it just looks like a children's soccer game when they all get into, like, a big blob, you know, and they're all trying to get the ball. But that is warfare, that is to say. Go, my retinue! Uh, I'm trying to see if I can do anything slightly more useful. You do have some combat commands, like give ground if you want to lure the enemy to follow you, I guess, toward your archers. We really should just get archers. I might do a boyer's workshop. I'm pretty confident my guys will be totally fine in this fight. Famous last words. Um, <laughs> yeah. But let's see if we can get somebody's house made into that. Does anyone have a free house? We need your family for some help. Uh, this could be used as a boyer's workshop. Yeah, converts all inhabitants to artisans, locking them from being assigned to other jobs, but still, that's fine. We have three free families anyway. Production of war bows is amazing. And we have lost one man, but they have lost five, so. So it seems as though we are, like, better equipped than they are. We still need better gear, though. It just makes you think, like, what an advantage it would have been to have a suit of armor in the past. Stand your ground, missile alert to watch for arrows, uh, but melee defense is halved, I guess if we're in like an open field combat area. Our retinue seems to be a little bit better armored. What do they have? Seems we've routed some of- have they routed us? What is going on here? What is that? Who even has a horn to play in there? Armory balance power, corpses near, ooh, like... Yeah, demoralized because corpses are nearby of their own people. Predicting- Stop rooting them on and actually help! Is this actually a thing? Can we somehow, like, force you into combat better? I'm sure I'm doing this wrong. Push forward. Try push forward with full force. Maybe that will make a difference here. Let's see if that changes any of their formation. Again, I'm still kind of getting used to a lot of this. If we had the archers, I would look slightly more tactical, but as it stands, it's just, it is what it is. Cool. Victory! Victory for the forces of democracy! Go home. Sorry about all those deaths. Oh, this guy was named Nickel. Very nice name, very nice name. 
Clean up all the dead bodies now. Ugh. All right, let's assign some people to the corpse pit in the church. All right, we've started to get some war bows. I'm not sure if we can actually take the the like weapons off the corpses of our enemies because we have them all lying here. So I I don't really see why we shouldn't be able to. Although I guess that doesn't account for gear degradation or if that's a thing. Uh, but would be an interesting mechanic if it if it is added. Um, or I'm not sure if it is there, to be totally honest. Uh, anyway, we are burying the bodies right now, but now we are starting to get war bows. So, uh, whoops, wrong thing I clicked. Here we go. We can start to create a ar an archer militia. Here we go. So we have only f room for f room for only four, but we do have this Fletcher's shop right here. So this family has specialized in creating bows, which is quite amazing. Um, I believe we do have, if I have a free level two building do I we need more food stall variety so we need to keep supporting this by putting vegetables in people's backyards either that or getting like you know um more robust wheat fields growing right here uh but I'm fine with this a little vegetable you know stall from one family or another here or there whoops there we go save um, won't hurt anyone. But let's go ahead and see if we can start to find... What's really going to improve our operation here will be... Wheat fertility, or emmer fertility right here, which we do have quite a lot of wheat fertility in this area. Some areas are just terrible for fertility, so... You can get kind of screwed in your spawn. If, if you do have a terrible... Uh, fertility spawn, I would recommend for now probably just restarting... Uh, cause that is quite bad. We can probably get another family onto this task, although we are not fully getting this across. I think another half Morgan for more wheat here will be helpful. The wheat was a little bit less specific, so we can do crop rotation. And we have, let's say next year we're going to do wheat again. So 61% is not bad. It's all green, but I seem to be maxing out around 61%. Let's improve the circulation right here. Uh, and let people kind of walk through. There we go. And, yeah, I mean, I do kind of see us specializing in wheat over time, though. Just becoming this giant producer of bread. Like an enormous bread basket. Look, we've already got 35 now, man. The only feature that I do not seem to see, at least clearly being evident if it is there, is... I want to build a malt house. I don't think I already have built one. I can't see one if it if there is one around here. It would be nice if former structures of the same type were highlighted. Uh, just because right now I have a weaver workshop, communal oven, clay furnace. I don't think I have a malt house anywhere over here, but I can't be totally certain. That would be nice if it were just in green or something like that. But just like random thing that I think feel like would give quality of life. And, okay, on top of all of that, uh, we have now enough influence to claim yet another area. So this has a huge iron deposit over here. That would be quite useful. Also this clay deposit, but we can start to claim more. And when this other ruler runs out of neutral areas to claim, then it's going to be more warlike uh, between us. But I think for now, we can probably just claim this area. Uh, gold off. That would be good. So I will claim that with influence. That gives us a lot of iron in the future, which... Kind of an advanced resource, but, you know, we might as well go right now, because we're starting to cover more of this area, and I can see that our developments are becoming more and more urban and large. Tally-ho, the time has come for yet another war. Uh, we have another bandit camp, in it, and that is for the all-important acquisition of influence. Look at the size of our armies now, man. Uh, we don't actually want to run there. We don't want to put them into push forward, but just balanced formation here. Take your time getting there. Don't get all out of breath by the time you get to this bandit camp because it's all the way across the map. Uh, but uh, all, for all more important influence, and we are able to defend our camp with the amount of wealth that we've now acquired in case if someone should attack us in the interim. Uh, but yeah, now we have bows, so we can start to engage them from afar. Okay, yet another region has been claimed for Goldhof. Uh, wait a minute, is that the name of our- No, I can ha- I don't even know what the name of our faction is, never mind. I am who I am. And I remain thus. Let us go to war with the nefarious bandits. Uh, taking the bread. Honestly, that's what they've done recently. They took 15 bread. That was a good amount of the bread. Uh, it's too bad that we can't, like, repurpose them, though. It would be so much more useful to just have these guys as fighters and just turn them against the other lord. 
Uh, unfortunately, he's off the map, so we can't really see how developed he is. I guess that's one thing, is just gauging how strong your enemy is. And, okay, we come to open war with the bandits. Let's leave our archers with good... It, it seems to me as though a, a variety of environmental factors are taking place right here, so I'm just going to put my archers right here so that they have a clear line of sight. We do have a couple, um, more friendly fire mode. <laughs> like, why? <laughs> I Maybe it somehow has a tactical advantage. Kind of dirty, but, uh, yeah. Shoot at will, so they have a volley, or if they're very close. Um, if, if they are far away, though, you know, it makes it less accurate. But yeah, you've got, like, real live medieval warfare tactics going on here, which is quite cool. Uh, we're going to just line these guys up so that these guys can get the most shots in as possible, maybe along this road so that they can see them through the tree line. And then, and I do believe, yeah, we have, like, kind of an arc of their fire over here. Whoops, we just had another save. Uh, so you see that kind of shadow, now they should be just coming into range, so now we should be able to fire upon them. And if we just line these guys up, let's just get them in good cohesion before they get there. Just have them ready. Now they're kind of running in, Maybe we could pick off a few people before they get in. Cool, so we did... I mean, it looks like that we hit them. Maybe we didn't kill them. I mean, it is just arrows. That would suck, though. All right, now they are very close. Let's have them fire at will. Maybe one more volley, and now we did take down one guy. Now let's go in at them. Oh gosh, I let them get, get too close. Run away, run away, run away. And that is bad. Oh god, what have I done? Uh, no, don't get involved in that. Uh, is there any way to give ground, give ground and run away, just run away. All right, run away archers, run away. Uh, I should not let that happen, though. They did speed up quite a lot when we let that happen. I guess... Is there any safe way to keep shooting here? I do believe they get, like, a bit of an arc over it. No, they just kind of root on our guys. All right, well, they did their job. They took down one or two guys and kind of weakened the enemy. But cool nonetheless. You know, when we get more units, this is going to be more maneuvering and flanking and in and out. I wonder if we get them over here, though. Let's just see if we can line them up on this side. Maybe, like, go this way first. Uh, go back to balanced formation, too. Can we hit them from behind? Is that allowed? Like, we are close to them. I'm not honestly sure how- I guess this just worked with great arcs of fire in real medieval combat. Okay, let's see what happens here. Alright, I guess we won't know. Never mind. Go home. Very cool, though. That is an example of, like, the type of medieval combat to expect here. Why have we separated? Okay, one thing that is becoming evident to me is that we are becoming limited by the lack of oxen around. Uh, we have ten timber around, five planks, but just transporting these goods around town is very, like, time-consuming and costly. So if we wish to get more of that done, we're going to need to order more. So I think we can just import here. We don't actually need a trade route. We can just say, send us one. And then that is 20 wealth, which is like quite a lot. But at the same time, I don't even know the difference here between a mule and an... I mean, this is more useful for... This is for like transporting and stuff. Lambs. Is that a lamb? Whatever it is. Um... Yeah, we need more of them, so we can do this at the Livestock Trading Post, of course, which is amazing. So we will do some of that. Okay, we have sighted yet another bandit camp out here, so I think it's time to bring over our enlarged military, uh, which has now grown to around 50 men, uh, now around harvest time, and we can oust them from our... Uh, actually, the lands we hope to claim sooner or later. I'm starting to notice that we are, you know, it, it is becoming trickier to manage food. Like, if you really mess up, it's not just a matter of hunting and gathering and waiting till next season. Like, people will starve when you have a large enough civilization if you don't have a good field system undergirding it all. Uh, actually, do not run. I don't know why. Why are we always running? Whatever. Uh, it's time to go and fight more people. Okay, I'm just going to continue testing things out in combat, so I'm having our uh, melee troops just stand in front, like our spear line. Stand right there. And just... 
Don't worry so much. Let's see what just happens if we just keep them here. Stand your ground. Because the AI just... I mean, as long as they aren't ranged, they, we seem to be fine. Okay, so these guys are shooting. Why aren't the rest of them shooting? I guess they weren't in range. Okay, now they're, they're all in range. That is very cool. Wow, look at this. Man, look at the arc over the melee. Uh, or here we go. Just look at that. That's so sweet, man. Wow. Okay, so they can do that. Getting like a uh, Lord of the Rings moment right here with the archers firing past. Like with Elrond on the slopes of Mount Doom, you know. Okay, this guy... What, dude? Okay, yeah, you deserved that. <laughs> oh, man, this is so sweet. This is like the childhood equivalent of just mashing uh, toy soldiers against each other, but just in game form. Okay, why are we not... Oh, because they're routed. Never mind, I thought they were... Okay, go home. We should probably give these guys some type of sidearms, too, just because... Well, with these archers in mind, like, if they get charged like that last group did with nowhere to turn, uh, they're pretty much dead if they have no backup. They're just kind of swinging their bows at them. So, cool. Didn't even lose a single guy in that one. It remains to be seen how they do against mercenaries, though, because I feel as though there is quite a lot of troop skill variation in this that we're not really getting to yet, but remains to be seen. A lot of games still left to discover. Okay, I don't know how I missed this one, uh, but you actually have to create a brewery extension at someone's house. Uh, we've been creating malt, but we need to make this family into artisans of beer, I suppose. So they will be the beer brewing family, and then that malt, or the, basically, barley from the fields goes to malt at the malt house, then the malt at the malt house goes into ale uh, at the brewery or someone's house. Don't question it. Uh, and then uh, the ale comes to the tavern, and then the tavern goes out to the people, making the people in level two uh, houses. Like, you know, it's just a more and more confusing supply chain as you go up. But I mean, that is like the ever-rising complexity of goods. Uh, and then basically, once we satisfy the tavern supply and the clothing stall supply needs of now they need more types of clothing. These are like more noble families. Um, or more like economically viable in any way whatsoever. Uh, but then that will allow us to level up our settlement to a uh, small town, which is, you know, getting closer to our goal. All right, the next few things we need to do, uh, we're just missing out on certain other clothing types. We really just need shoes. So I'm getting a cobbler's workshop made here uh, and more of these level two burgage plots. So. Really having these add-ons to the houses, like large plots, just so that people can kind of own their own family business here, uh, is kind of sweet. Like this whole just little medieval economy going on in here is is, is very intricate and I like it a lot. Um, like this is one that doesn't actually have room on the plot for any other industry, so it's just kind of another family. They'll be useful for like militia or something, but that's about it. Uh, it's nice to just give people their own type of thing to do. Although, again, you do keep having to expand, and it's always more mouths to feed. So I think for here we can go in with just another one of these. We're fine on timber, but you really do get a lot of use out of just about all your resources, except perhaps stone. Some of these things, like roof tiles, remain to be seen, but I'm probably trading away more value than I should for right now. Anyway, just uh, more cool stuff. I think we're getting ready to upgrade a few houses to level three here. All right, I've decided to just take a quick walk around as my lord. Uh, you always seem to get this, although this feature seems to be still in development. Um, kind of cool, though. I mean, it looks like a fully fleshed out game to me. This looks like something that I would pay for, you know. Maybe, I don't know, maybe not a fully modern, but like a game. Maybe even, you know, like... um. Oh, what was that game? I'm uh, blanking right here. The medieval game that was extremely realistic. Whatever. It looks like that type of experience. I mean, if this is made to be more interactive, then we are in for a big treat right here because this almost looks like a full RPG the way it's the way it's being done right here. But yeah, I mean, who knows? Like maybe some type of banner lord type of deal. Got I don't know. It just it's pretty sweet to me. Even the market over here. With all the, uh, sellers, you know, trying to peddle their goods and whatnot. But I can just get a, come out of that feature for right now. 
Uh, I've got a lot more fields going because we nearly starved this past winter, so I had to import a lot of bread. I wasted a lot of money, but we kind of have the dough to burn now. Um, pun intended. Yeah, uh, I went there. But next, I suppose we really need to expand territories because now we're going to be managing like a multifaceted economy right here. And that's kind of sweet. And then I guess we could go to uh, declaring war on this other lord to claim all the rest of the territory once we've got this. Other thing I'm going to do is just add in a little bit of an augmentation onto our manor. Uh, this one is a garrison tower, which increases their maximum retinue size. Uh, our retinue has slightly shrunken down. I suppose we need to recruit a minimum of five equipped recruits acquired. Uh, I guess we need the... Maybe we ran out of the weapons. I need to double check on that, honestly, but uh, quite cool stuff. Okay, I think I've figured out the issue with why we are missing some of our retinue. Uh, if I'm saying this word right, uh, I don't know, so let, let me know. Um, but yeah, they are, uh, I think that they seem to be missing nobles. It's like from noble families, and really the main thing holding us back from that right now is just the lack of beer, so there you have it. We need more beer, and then that will create more nobles so that they can, like, live their very, uh, luxurious, uh, exuberant lifestyle. Uh, but for now, we can just continue declaring war on various bandits that come into the region. Then once we run out of neutral territories to claim, then... Uh, and let's not run over there. Stop running, everyone. <laughs> Manor lords. Or please stop running in the hallways. And head out. Uh, but this year, we are finally going to get a really, really good harvest going because I have three families working on that. Uh, and we've never had so much productivity before. That is when the men get back from war, because it's basically all of the peasant men that go to war for me. <laughs> it's gonna take them about a month to get there and back from this uh, bandit camp. But, uh, cool stuff. Okay, we have yet another battle. Uh, this one is gonna be similar to the last one. We just outnumber them like four to one, and we're better armed, so... Like, our civilization is kind of coming along here, but I, I just think that this is kind of sweet when they go to battle like this. Uh, just a couple more combat effects we've got. Effectiveness is lowered because it's raining, so that's another interesting one, but I guess that applies to both sides. Oh, that's funny, these guys don't actually have a negative effect due to rain. Maybe because of, like, it being kind of awkward to, uh, string a bow in the rain? Could be that, or aim it, or something like that. Effectiveness 96%. We don't actually see any more status effects on the enemy, but... It seems to me as though their range... Did it come down? Not positive on that, but yeah, this is quite a cool scene to see. Man, I love the way that the Arc of Fire goes over our men. That's so sweet, dude. Ah, oh, cool. Although, what happens when they, they just sort of, like, get hit with arrows and then just kind of go, meh? See if we can get in one more volley before we engage them. Okay, two have gone down. I prefer fighting them out here as well, just because uh, then we don't have to bury them back at our home. Okay, now what do we get? I guess I could have gone over to fire at will, but yeah, basically an instant route. Uh, let's just go have these guys claim the camp. Not a bad fight! Alright, we are finally able to upgrade some of our burgage plots to level 3, so now we have some very, very large house, some very houses, some very uh, wealthy families coming in here. Only thing is we've kind of had to uh, make our way through the divide just through like the awkward management of fields, but we are now getting everything fully planted by Like this one is completely finished. This is our wheat uh, And it's only May. I would like to bring this back even earlier So I think we're going to need even more families, which is probably why we've got uh, So many available to be assigned here, but you know, we could bring in oxen uh, which would make the whole plowing process go faster, because that is quite time-consuming. But, um, yeah, this is why we need more technology. Just picking out those right early technologies, like... We had a lot of berries, maybe, to begin with, by buffing that, but... We aren't really plowing our fields very well, so that's another thing going on here. Alright, here we go. I was waiting for this for a little while. Maybe because I didn't have my fields planted very well before, but we've got some nice crop growth here. So we've got some wheat coming up over here, and it looks like the barley, yep, this is barley starting to come up from the ground. So very cool stuff that that's now all growing. 
I've left these other ones fallow. Maybe I'm overdoing it on how many fields to leave fallow, but still, we aren't getting quite that much uh, each time. And I need to make more room for more families, but just this civilization... Just managing the hunger of this civilization is becoming a task unto itself. It's funny, I thought most of my stress would be about, like, combat. Ooh, we can also claim another region with our influence now. Um, might be nice to get that wild animal deposit over there. Wild animal deposit, I don't know what I'm... Maybe not the right word for that, but whatever. Alright, cool, four regions for us now. The bandits have decided to create another camp in the south. This is nefarious and bad, so... Obviously, we are going to oust them again from these lands. Hopefully, this will start to get to the end of the claimed lands, because, uh... I think we're just about ready to declare war on this other, like, nobleman in the area. Because he wants the same things that we want, and that is unacceptable, obviously. Uh, are we shooting at them, please? There we go, 15, and they are demoralized. Their effectiveness has been faltered. Uh, due to our... Extreme combativeness. Alright, these people will go to the camp whilst the others fight, and then we will go home. Because I don't even think we're going to need any help here anymore. Okay, and in the meantime, we've had our first, uh, successful harvester, I would call it thus. I mean, we are at now, what, 23 wheat and 6 barley, but still a lot of barley to harvest. Okay, but we are actually getting somewhere with our crops, too, and this is even without heavy plows. We really need this so that we can start to feed, uh, ale through the town, and then that will allow us to get heavy plows, because... We really need to scale our farming if we want to make this civilization grow, because the next thing we just need is more families, more people, more specialized workshops, and that's gonna get us there. Alright, we're finally reaching the point where we can get Eichenhau, uh, with this last house upgrade to level 3. Uh, or, whoops, uh, more than that. I'm not quite sure how much more. Although, it seems as though some of these early picks are kind of setting us back now. Like, berries just not as important. They just don't scale as well. Uh, the firewood cart, this stuff was useful. The food cart also, but has kind of run out of its, uh, course here. So, some of this other stuff doubles the meat amount harvested by hunters and butchers from, uh, and from goat pens. That is quite useful. Charcoal kiln. Charcoal may be very useful here, just because because uh, fuel needs, but at the same time, I think heavy plow is going to be the best thing for us here. Just scaling up our farming operation. This is also where a lot of the tech is available here. Bakeries, fertilization, uh, which would be amazing if we could use for fields. But just a lot of this stuff is kind of far out of reach when you're in an early settlement. I mean, now we need... Uh, 10 level 3 burgage plots, but this should also help us, I believe, uh, increase the size of our retinue. Recruits still missing. Um, charge impelling attack, anti-armor, shield. Not too sure what to do about that, because we do have, like, several what appear to be noble families here, so I, I suppose I'm just missing something there. But, um... Yeah, I mean, like, our civilization is getting a little bit better at sustaining itself. Don't be fooled by this, it's just I kind of had a minor blip with fuel. Uh, but the only thing that I think happens here is it you do get a bit of a slowdown, like I said. Um, and, like, I think I'm getting a little bit better at getting past this, but right now it's just sort of like, bandit camps don't pop up fast enough. Uh, so right now we're in March. We do have the heavy plow. I'm thinking as far as advanced stuff goes here, threshing priority medium, a little bit of early access stuff there. Let's add a plowing station so that we could get the heavy plow in on our fields. And then we will send out one last large force of men to this bandit camp. Because the one thing that I'm finding it takes a while to do, um, you can gain influence from like the church by uh, basically sending them food and like taxing the living daylights out of your people, but, uh, I don't really want to lower our growth rate. Actually, our growth rate is fine. We, we could take a hit there if we wanted to. But, ooh, we don't want to be running. Um, but it does get a little bit slower at this point, and it's a little bit tricky to see what other civilizations are growing. Like, right here, this, um, what's his name? Uh, Baron Hildebolt von Berenut, whose name I'm butchering again, uh, is... 
like claimed these lands, but it's going to cost us 2,000 influence to claim them. So we've got a, a ways to go right here. So this is going to be a little bit more development here. I, I think we can still get something appreciably interesting going on, but it does kind of stall out. I, th I would say that would be like my only thing right now, although it took me a while to discover trade. The one thing with trade, though, is like we've been <laughs> kind of uh, selling some items Maybe to our own detriment, but look, look how quickly we're plowing the fields now. It's only, what, March? Ooh, nice. We've got like five families on this job now, too. And this is... let me just multitask right here. Okay, they're getting closer to the bandit camp. But yeah, this is a great place to be for early March. We've got wheat growing, more flax, and more wheat. We don't have any space for barley, but I'm thinking maybe I'm not doing enough here. Now with this heavy plow... Wow, they got that done really fast. Okay, yeah, look, this is already... Jeez, it's already at 51% growth and we're only in March? That's amazing. Do we actually have a close-up of the ox working in the field to plow? No, but this is still great news. All right, yet another land claimed for uh, Lord AA. Uh, we will continue sending resources to our economy because we could always tax our own economy and look We've already just kind of passively made some money through our um, taxation of the uh, of the peasants But here we go. We will send them back here and now like honestly with the fields in full bloom This is looking like a better operation now. I would say that this is about Five hours into a playthrough though just to kind of put that into perspective. I've skipped over enough stuff I don't know what the timestamp will be in the video uh, But yeah, I would say that's about where we're at in this and the other thing too is I now feel like I've learned enough in this playthrough of like oh we could probably get uh, a militia raised through our homes and like personal artisanal shops and stuff like that That I now would feel a little bit more confident playing on a more difficult mode because I think that this mode is still just a bit forgiving to players um, Whereas the one where bandits are raiding all the time is just a little bit trickier uh, Not enough supplies Still just a fuel thing. I need to get my charcoal up and running, but that still again requires another upgrade so uh, but still, I mean, now we have more things just able to be upgraded to level three because we have a we have a better supply of beer everywhere. Uh, three, wow, I didn't expect that much. Four, okay, wow, we are going way faster than I expected. I take everything back now that I've just sort of made us self-sufficient and self-sustaining. Uh, our civilization is growing at a breakneck rate, uh, pace. Look at this. Okay, we have a rather large force of bandits on the way. I still think this won't require us to take out our, um... Uh, mercenaries, but that will be something to think about when we start to confront the other leader in combat, because they are very strong. Um, we can just bring together our military, but this is going to be probably the largest battle that we have fought yet. Let's bring everyone out. It's an unfortunate time of year, but fortunately we've already sown all of the fields. Um, or sown all of the crops in the fields. But here we go, alright. Big battle about to happen. If we can get this done off of our home territory, that would be amazing. Or maybe keep our people on them, just because I don't want to bury the bodies, you know, like, ew. It is what it is. Okay, we've got what appears to be a flank occurring from one side, so I'm just going to get our archers together here. We really should get some type of sidearm armament armamentation going on here. Uh, we do not have it, we just haven't been thinking so much about it because I haven't been attacked like this yet. But we need to defend our archers because they are very precious and small. Here we go. Okay, so this looks like our first example of like open warfare. Take them! Send them to the abyss. Although we will probably have another unit of enemies coming out of the forest there, because I saw more. Who is that going that away? Oh, this is a traitor. Yeah, there they go. See, there's more coming out of the forest there. Very scary. Though this is the same amount of men that we have here. Um, defense is doubled, but f attack frequency is halved. Let's see if our archers can continue arching. Will they continue with their archering? 
they do. So then that means defensive formation. Okay, now defensive formations is necessary because our archers can continue with the archering. Look, there they go, sending pointy things at uh, hostile angry men. This is a tactical. Very excitement. Wow. Look at them go. Killing each other with sharp objects. Hitting one another and striking danger into the... All right, here we go. Beautiful, beautiful stuff. Wow. I am, like, almost Napoleon now. Look at me go. Nope, oh, there they go. All right, that's it. Wow, splendid defense, splendid defense, men. Disband thyselves and watch as they return to hearth and home for economic undertakings. Very cool, very cool. Just look at how fluidly, except for that one guy, which I really do enjoy this. I, Oh, wait, no, he was a bandit. Never mind. I thought that was one of our guys who just got very into combat. Now, it might start to pay to get them armor and stuff like that, too. Uh, I would like to keep them alive, although we've just had good formation and I feel as though we've developed our economy well. Just look at that. That's so sweet. Just all of them returning home from combat. What other game does that, man? I don't think I've ever seen that in anything else. It just feels so organic and real. Okay, on the map we now have enough influence to claim the last region before uh, we have to start going to war with this other guy. So I think I'm going to do that. We've got a, another bandit camp to take out, but we are very capable now. Our civilization has many fields and many people living it. We have 135 population. Quite honestly, it looks like more than that live here, but okay. I guess that's what we can sustain. Uh, it's almost totally men. We have like twice as many men as women. I don't understand this in medieval civilization, but I guess, you know, the men go to war and whatnot. Uh, so it is what it is. Here we go. Um, you will fight to the death. There we are. Probably because of things like that. But now uh, we embark on just, like, basically a great agrarian journey of... Now, ooh, we have ale. We are able to upgrade everything else. Uh, it's mainly just fixing up the last of these supply chains. Now we've got dedicated livestock bringing uh, logs to the saw pit to cut things, and that will help us get our village leveled up yet even more. And yet another battle. I guess the only thing that I would say in this campaign is that a lot of these battles appear kind of samey, but I think we're about to totally change the nature of this campaign when we start fighting an actual organized force, and this has been good prep for that. Uh, but yeah, I mean, that is to say, I, I haven't been overwhelmed by this game in difficulty at all, which is quite nice, uh, but it does feel fair. All right, our settlement level has increased yet again. Uh, fertilization would be nice, but I'm feeling like just we can't keep up with our fuel game. This would be good, bigger extension. I mean, everything is good here. Uh, we haven't had a drought yet either, but I think we're about to go to war. Uh, and there is more technology there. I, all of these technologies seem useful to me. Better deals, remove the tariffs from it. Oh, wow. Reduces import prices by 10. Yeah, let's get that. That's going to make life way better. That way we can avoid all these annoying tariffs. Everything is so expensive to import. What does everything cost now? Oh my gosh, everything is so cheap. Wow, this really opens up the whole trade game. Um... Okay, I feel like a huge load just gets taken off with all of these new technologies. And now look at how transformed our village is. Like, remember what this was before? It was just sort of a humble village, and now it's kind of turning into this... S slightly less humble village. But, I mean, you can go up and down the streets. The, uh, the streets. Let's go walk around for a second. I don't think anything is usable. Some of the yards are enterable, though. Very, very cool. Very, very cool. Can we... Okay, we just go through the wall. I thought we jumped or something. Um, I cannot go through the fence. All right, but can I go in... S I don't think I'll be able to do that. Yeah, but... Anyway, yeah, very cool stuff. Let's go ahead and get more influence so that we can start a war with... Or whatever his name is. It doesn't matter. 
Okay, this is a full-fledged economy. I didn't even realize that we were creating this many shields for our men. We still will need a lot of shields. Uh, or small shields would be useful, but we've been creating so many bows in the background here. All of these along with the shoes. Bows and shoes that we've been selling. Uh, you know, maybe desired surplus will slightly raise here, actually, as our population grows. I guess the one thing is it would be nice if I could make it proportional to the population, so like one for each person or whatnot. Um, but this is still really good. But, yeah, overall, when we get rid of all those annoying tariffs, uh, our economy has significantly improved here, and we really, uh, hang on a second, not enough stable space. We do need to fix that. Um... We should probably have one, of fam one family assigned to that, too. Now we can assign all these families to very specialized tasks, but you really do go feel from feeling like you're this kind of subsistence village. Uh, like, living off of... I've, I've never had a game nail this system so well. Of feeling like... You're going from this, like, insular... Tiny, self-contained village... All the way up to a bustling economy that's kind of like... Uh, maybe not globalization, but, you know, interdependence with the region, and that is quite a cool feeling to do. Um, yeah, I guess that's all I really wanted to say, but we're, we're still kind of finding our specialized goods, and then it will be off to war for our greater claims. Okay, we're getting ready to start another settlement nearby. I just figured we've pretty much saturated this region about as much as we can. I don't want to totally destroy the land, so I think we're probably better off moving somewhere else. And we're better than where all of the resources are fairly dense over here, and we have a rich berry deposit. At the very least, this area will probably be very self-sustaining, and as a decent road access, we could... Actually, I hadn't really thought of that, never mind. Um, the land is not very fertile, but this will make for a very good clay deposit mining area, and... We've already got a lot of that over here, and we are a, a vast next net exporter of, um, of roof tiles, so I think that this will be another fantastic economic opportunity. Uh, alongside that, this will improve our influence in general. The other thing I've been trying to do now that the bandits are basically gone from the lands because we've claimed all of them, uh, is now I'm kind of turning more toward taxes and teeth in order to improve our influence. So percentage of surplus uh, food that is given to the church in return for influence. So I suppose this is sort of like a divine claim on a land, you know, like, um, or something like that. I guess that gets a little bit uh, fuzzier when we're talking about like, uh, fabricating claims to lands of uh, other people, which he already claimed, that, who knows how he claimed them in the first place though. But, uh, yeah, it, it is quite a long trek to 2,000 influence, so arguably maybe I should have just done that before when there were still neutral territories. I don't believe that the AI will claim anymore, but it's been fairly non-aggressive here. Actually, playing on the default right here, I wouldn't mind if the AI came after me a bit more. Maybe I'll just declare war on them for no reason. All right, so now we're really starting to get our global network going here. We're going to start to connect this other settlement to our main road and... It seems to me that they function more or less just as their own whole, like, different unit than our main area, because all my UI changes depending on where I've highlighted. Like, this area has different needs. It says that we have hitching needs, but, uh, I don't really think we do- I can't find them. I mean, we have surplus space in there, so I can't figure that out, but... Yeah, I mean, it seems just about time to raise an army and go to war with this other guy. Oh, we have an entire menu I just didn't even notice in here. Uh, this menu is like a little bit hidden. Uh, we do also have other settlements too, but... Uh, wild animals are rich deposits breed twice as fast at the cost of 50%... Uh, I don't really like that, but I like citizens skip every fifth meal. Uh, although that also decreases approval. Um, eh, but I think that's probably okay, because we get more? And then this one is, I guess, just not really done here, but that's okay. Oh, and we could also rename our region. That is quite nice. Uh, but yeah, something seems to have happened right here. I thought that I had more. Oh, well. Oh, you know, I know what happened is that when I upgraded my plots from level 2 to level 3, that ticked down my level 2 plots by 1. So you really do need to, like, grow out your village a lot more. Yeah, I think I'm just going to declare war on this guy. All right, so Hildebolt von... Blah, blah, 
Uh, we will have a war surprise for you. Send. Okay, enemy is declared. I just kind of want to see how combat works out because I don't really want to raise another 2,000 influence. Uh, we seem to have given up about 500 of it. Gonna be worthwhile if you dr uh, I don't really even have any claims, so let me just say no. No conversation. Not even gonna answer, son. Although I don't really know how to do anything because he doesn't have anywhere that I can attack. I guess this wasn't a very smart war to declare. Nonetheless, let's see. I will not drop my claims to nowhere. All right, we have uh, had a payment made to us in order to drop my claim, so they... I don't know, I guess we must be playing with like a very weak AI. Let's just de keep declaring war on him so that he'll keep sending us more money. Keep sending us more money, <laughs> need silver. Uh... Oh, I guess we can't do it twice in one month. All right, let's just tell him that we need some money too now. Here, send us money. <laughs> and maybe to the outlaws as well. <laughs> I don't know, just why not? Uh, yeah. We've already done war surprise. Okay, send us some money too. This looks kind of like earlier in development just because of the way that's being written, but... Um, yeah, I will be very curious as to what happens with more... Families starting to move in. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, we'll see if we can get a war up and running. If not, we'll just attack various stuff. Okay, we have increased our settlement level at last. Uh, so now we are on to much, much bigger and better things. Uh, I'm thinking charcoal burning would be good. Also, uh, just because of the sheer amount of alcohol that this place needs to, like, thrive. Maybe fertilization. Fallow field as a, a pasture which rapidly restores lost fertility. Oh, so you could, like, swap between... Having animals poop on the land, and that is brilliant, honestly, but I think I just don't want to overcomplicate my life. Let's just do charcoal for right now. Um, not that it's even making a huge difference, but we do have another development point. Does that lead to policies, production? I think we already did it all. Okay, just to see if we can do one last surprise war declared on a man for no reason. All right, we've actually reached a maximum settlement level at Eichenhaus. So I guess this is about as big as a settlement is meant to get, and I would say that's pretty bustling for a medieval village, you know? Um, that's about as big as we go, and that's about as large as I would want to grow in a region. So now we're kind of, uh, kind of on to developing other areas. I don't seem to have another option when- oh, uh, here we go, I have another one for Zwayau. Oh, we can actually totally change around the tree for a different settlement. That is useful to know. And honestly, if I were to go back in time, I might have had more settlements, now that I've actually started to do this a little bit, and maybe specialize them in different things. I could see the potential, of, like, you know, wide or tall, that kind of whole debate. But really interesting nonetheless, and I like this whole civilization manager. It feels like each one is nicely automated. I guess the only thing I will just wait here for a second to see if I can still declare war. I'm assuming that because... Uh, like, I'm getting underscores in some of the writing on these things. It, maybe war surprise isn't really what I'm meant to be doing here. If I were to go back in time, maybe I would have just waited until I had 2,000 influence, but I, I guess this is more just where we're at in, um, early access, unless if I'm missing something totally. We did get a couple interesting battles in there. Um, I'm really curious to see what can be done with, like, larger scale battles here, because it does feel like there is a lot going on with combat. Uh, especially that we didn't even get to, because if I go to hiring mercenaries, we have now flock of crazy geese. Ooh, the origin of the goose is vague. A lot of members used to be broke farmers. Practically anyone could join this company as long as they do not fear death. Uh, so, yeah, having a lot of mercenaries is actually quite easy to do here. I might just raise up an army just to show how large they can get, but it would be cool to have them attack someone. <laughs> You know what I've decided to do, just because I don't really have as much conflict in that other, uh, save file as I could, I've just decided to go back to one of my other save files when I was learning the game and, uh, just hire every single possible mercenary, and now I'm going to... It's only, like, a very poor bunch of bandits right here, but where are these guys coming in on the map? Let me just kind of walk my guys back, because I do have quite a large army here. I just can't find a large enough group of... Uh, enemies right here. I had them wandering around when I first was playing, but okay, here they all come in from the map edge. So here's just an idea of like what a, a large force of mercenaries would look like. Something like this, and that is 
That is quite a few men uh, going off to war. This isn't even that much gear variation because they're all just mercenaries, but... I mean, imagine this with all of your militias from your settlements and your retinue, as well as all of your mercenaries. And I'll, here, I'll go back. This is probably one of the larger battles that I had. Despite the fact that the enemy is only 16 people, it does give you an idea of what it would look like to have multiple units right here firing. So let's have our archers. Actually, we'll just line them up there. These are infantry from the flock of crazy geese. Uh, this seems to be a, a reappearing mercenary band. I had them in multiple save files, but it's quite funny. Nonetheless, uh, we will go to fire at will. Wait, do I, I didn't order a, issue a move order, did I? Hopefully not. Uh, cool. All right, so we are actually going to combat now, but yeah, I mean, it just seems as though there's going to be a lot of options for flanking and stuff, and... Uh, I guess because I didn't pick the hardest one, hardest start, uh, like, I, I probably didn't get to tons of combat because I didn't think I would be able to handle tons of bandits, but yeah, I, I feel as though this game was very intuitive and easy to learn. I mean, I guess just, like, kind of close it, and this is another save file where there were more claimed areas from another faction, but yeah, I, I'm really looking forward to the combat. If you guys like this, I would be happy to come back and try the uh, more difficult bandit start, it seems. Um, I was just thinking this would be a little bit more open war with another ruler. Maybe if I were to go a little bit further, but it seems as though I would need to develop for a while, so I would kind of rather just start another save file at that point, but yep. Um, anyway, yeah, Manor Lords, uh, thanks again to Hooded Horse for the uh, key, uh, and it is going to be hitting on, what is the date? It's April 20-something. Uh, I'm just checking Steam right here if you want to check it out for yourself on the date. And I have lost access to the internet. I want to say April 26th. Uh, don't quote me on that, but just, yeah, look it up. It's on Steam coming out very soon. Uh, this is a very cool game, one I would not miss out on. Um, anyway, thanks for watching, guys, and uh, until next time.